What's up, Lake Washington CrossFit? Hope you guys had a good Monday. We had our first outlaw workout, as well as our first day of the nutrition challenge. So it looks like a lot of you guys have logged your nutrition challenge scores. I wanted to make one quick note here. I've got my handy dandy iPad with the low battery sign on, of course. But if you can kind of see on the screen here, uh, there's a picture of a guy. And below that, if it's possible at all to see, it has the workout of the day, and it also has, it gives you two different tracks. It has the 800 gram nutrition challenge and the workout of the day. So long story short, if you're in the nutrition challenge, it's gonna automatically start on the 800 gram challenge. So you're gonna have to log all your stuff there. If you want to log your workout, you're going to need to click on the workout of the day part, and that's gonna take you to the normal main page that everybody sees. So um, there's not, anything different you're still going to log on the same spot but you're basically going to have two different windows that you can go through one for the nutrition challenge and one for your standard stuff that way you still get to get fist bumps get fist bumps check out your scores compared to other people etc so um outlaw workout hope you guys did enjoy it i'm going old school today back in the day when we we're following the outlaw way i got one of their hats check it out got a lwcf logo on the side too so you know we were all in on Outlaw a while ago, and I think it's time just to revisit that. That workout kicked my patootie anyway, so see how day number two is. For the skill, we have a middle distance test. So middle distance runners, I know that you know, anything over 400 is, is considered middle distance in track and field, and if you do an 800 meter to full capacity, it is absolute death. It is a similar feeling to what Fran feels like um, and in the same manner, I feel like the better shape you are in, the worse that that 800 meter sprint really feels like. If you have someone who's able to, you know, get sub three minutes on that 800 meter, um, they're really gonna feel absolutely terrible. So, um, but if you just pace it out, it ain't that bad. I want you to go as hard as you can, which is why we have pre or post workout. I am definitely not doing that thing before I do my workout. Because an 800 meter run feels like garbage if you go really hard and you have that kick at the end. So um, I'm not sure what my time's going to be like, but it's going to get done at the end of the workout rather than before it. So um, if you have a 400 meter loop or a 400 meter route, either run it twice or run 400 meters out or 400 meters back. If you have a 200 meter loop that you already have set up, run that back and forth a few times. If you only have a 100 meter loop that you've preset, you need to run that eight total times. So however you got to get it done. Try to make it as close as possible to 800 meters. And if you give a good effort on this, you're going to be getting the benefit that we want. And that's a special energy system that only exists in that uh, middle distance sprint Fran type range. The workout is going to be something you're going to have to pace out a little bit more. So the outlaw wad of the day, we have seven rounds of fun. So beginning uh, with equipment, if you have a dumbbell, use it. You will need your dumbbell for the whole thing except the push-ups. So it begins with, I'm gonna grab my big heavy eight pound dumbbell over here for the demo. I do have a 50 back there, but it actually hits the ceiling. Um, and I don't wanna do 50 pound snatches right now. Um, so the carry, just like you think, hold it to your side, whichever side you want, you can switch back and forth. It has an uphill dumbbell carry, so if you are lucky enough like myself to be on a driveway that's uphill it is uh shoot i think it's 70 meters i think we measured to the top of the driveway so uh, from the bottom so um, i'm going to go up to the top and then i need to do alternating dumbbell snatches bring it back down do my push-ups and repeat for seven rounds so if you don't have a hill give me 100 meters ish for your carry so you're going to take it 100 meters out you're going to do your dumbbell snatches alternating it's going to start on the ground every time Butt down, chest up, one continuous motion, lock it out up overhead, bring it back down, switch hands, touches the ground, up overhead. We finish fully stacked every single time. So, with my assistant here, the pen, at the bottom position, I want you whoosh, like that. Nice straight back, almost like a little squatty guy. What I don't want to see is this guy. Rounded back, hips way up in the air, coming down, trying to pick up that dumbbell right there. So that's what it ends up looking like after a while. That looks a little more phallic than I want to, so 
Let's make it a, an actual dumbbell. Good. Um, so alternating means we're going to do 10 on each side. You will not be doing 10 and then 10. You're going to go one, then two, then three, then four from ground up to overhead. What's the difference between a dumbbell snatch and a dumbbell clean and jerk? A clean and jerk is a clean followed by a jerk. A snatch is controlled hip drive, one continuous motion up overhead locked out. Ground up to the top without making a stop at the shoulder. We come down the hill and then we do 15 hand release push up. That's what HR push ups are. Whether you're doing them uh, on your knee or on your feet at the bottom, all you're going to do is release those hands. So you can pull them off. When you're at the bottom, that's literally going to make sure that your chest is on the ground. Let's see if we can see me way back here. Can you kind of see me? My chest is on the ground. I raise my hands. I press back up. Chest is on the ground. Raise my hands. Go back up. You can do the same thing with a knee push-up. Um, if you're kind of a tweener, uh, knee push-ups and regular, I'd recommend scaling this by maybe doing a few less reps of push-ups on hand release. I want you to keep on moving. So if you scale it down to 10 uh, from the feet, that's fine. Make sure you mark that as scale because that's scaling the amount of repetition. So we can scale the movement type or we can scale the movement load. Either one's fine as long as you're moving in the right direction and getting better. Um, yeah, any questions on this stuff, make sure to hit us up. Outlaw wad number two on the way.